All right, in this video, we're going to modify our Pong game from parts one through three by actually versing a CPU rather than two players. So right now, player one is controlled by W and S, and the C or player two is controlled by up and down. We're going to change player two to be a computer that steers itself. So a couple of things we're going to do in global. Uh, I'm just going to make a comment. I'm not going to change my player one, my player two variables to be like CPU or something, because then we have to change all of our collisions. I'm just going to say player two is now CPU. And we are going to make one more variable called CPU speed, because you might want your CPU to move at a different speed than your player, because that would affect your difficulty. So instead of having them both move at P speed, you'll be able to set your player speed and your CPU speed differently, which allows you to change your difficulty levels. The next thing we're going to do is we actually don't need our key pressed function anymore. So we are going to delete key pressed. Okay, so we're going to come down here and get rid of key pressed because this is moving our player two. We are going to make a new function called CPU. And this is where we're actually going to put the control for our CPU which will then be able to drop into our program. So this is going to be controls CPU player. Now it's pretty straightforward. If the ball Y position is above the CPU, well then our CPU has to move up. If the ball Y position is below the CPU, well then the CPU has to move down. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to say uh, if ball X is less than, actually I'm sorry, greater than or equal to width divided by two. And what that means is has the ball, has the ball crossed center court. If you don't have this if statement, the CPU is gonna be moving all the time. This only allows the CPU to move when the ball is on his side of the court. We're gonna say if ball or if, if, uh, if P2Y is less than or equal to ball Y, then P2Y is going to be P2Y plus CPU speed. So that's going to be move down. Close. Oops, I just realized I forgot a, a bracket here. Open bracket. There we go. And this is going to be close above ball. Next, we're going to say if P2Y is greater than or equal to ball Y, P2Y is going to be P2Y minus CPU speed. That's going to be move up and close below ball. Then we're going to close move CPU. And then we need an else saying P2Y equals P2Y. So this is only move when ball is on your CPU side. Close else, like so. Let's give this guy a shot after, one more step, almost forgot, we need to actually call our CPU function in draw, just like we called our key typed function that we deleted. So I'm going to go up to our pong call functions, and we're going to say CPU. This is going to be loop CPU function. Let's push play. So we're on player one side, so I'm gonna hit this guy and we should see the CPU move once the ball crosses over. It does, chases the ball, and of course hits it. Now as I mentioned, uh, if you change the speed of the CPU, it would obviously change your difficulty because then you can try to get some type of good corner shots in uh, and hopefully beat the CPU.